And when they said unto me, We will go into the house of the Lord. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon his name while he is near. As we approach our holy God, we realize that we have seen and come short of his glory. Let us therefore humbly confess our sin unto him, kneeling, and let us say together, O God, our righteous judge and merciful Father, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We acknowledge that we are responsible for our sinfulness. Have mercy upon us, we pray you. And forgive us by the love which you have shown to us us in Jesus Christ, who for our sakes died and rose again. Give us true repentance by the power of your Holy Spirit, and enable us to forsake our evil ways and serve you in newness of life. We have this through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Almighty and Merciful Lord grant unto us pardon and remission of all our sins, Amen. time for amendment of life, Amen. and grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Bible is saying that God has forgiven us because Jesus, the Lamb of God, has died for us. Let us adore Him, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits upon the throne. Amen. Let's sing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. You have done well with your servants, O Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord. Your word is a lamp to our feet. Please stand for the sun. Psalm appointed for this service, Psalm 23. I will read in alternate verses. Psalm 23 shall be read in alternate verses. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. You will make my life and be my trust, and let me decide. He will refresh my soul and guide me in right pathways for his name's sake. Spread the table before me and the breast in the face of those who troubled me. You have anointed my head with oil and my cup. Will be full. Surely the of my life in the house of the Lord forever. service is taken from 1 Peter chapter 5. The elders which are among you, who am also an elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, 
and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the floor of God, which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for fitting or free, but of a ready mind. Neither has been loved over God's heritage, but being examples of flock. And when the sheep shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Ye, all of you, be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisted the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he might exalt you in due time, casting your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom receives steadfast in faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that he has suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, say to you, here hangs the reading.
honor, power, and majesty. For what the Lord has done in our lives uh, from the beginning of this school till today. We do not take it for granted. Pray that may his name ever be praised forever and ever in Jesus' name. Amen. Your grace on behalf of my team this morning, we register our gratitude and appreciation to you, sir. And Mama, the most reverend Dr. Joseph Olatu Diakikawa and Mama, we pray that God Almighty will come to empower you more and more. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The only prayer that I always pray for you from time to time, only prayer, is that you will be made heaven in the name of Jesus. Amen. My Lord Provo, sir. Thank you very much, sir. God bless your ministry in the name of Jesus. Amen. In time past in this house, when Baba Unola called you, or you see Baba Unola's call, you know that you have an official assignment. But in this uh, era, Baba, Father, he will not call you. He will just send a message to you. If you are using three different WhatsApp, he will make sure that he sends all the messages to that three WhatsApp and then send another text message. And then when he will send it, he will not send it during the daytime. It's around 1 a.m. Baba, Father, yeah, thank you very much, sir. God bless you in Jesus' name. Let me appreciate my colleague, uh, the Uduba Donfi Badam. Thank you very much for hosting the Lord Almighty God to empower you more and more in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Oh Lord and Heavenly Father, we ask, O oh God, that as we speak your word this morning, speak to us, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that at the end of your word, let all of us go home rejoicing. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Under the general team, we say, Good Shepherd. But for this uh, exhortation of this morning's uh, service, I just took the team from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 2. The text, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 2, says, Be shepherd of God's flock that is under your care. Be shepherd of God's flock. As under your care. First Peter chapter 5, verse 2 says, Feed the flock of God that is among you, as I say, of a sight, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God will have you, not for shameful gain, but eagerly. Shepherding the flock of God, elder are called to pastor. What does it mean to be shepherd? We have had a lot of definition. But let me have this. Shepherd care for the sheep. Shepherd lead the flock and feed the flock. Shepherd lead the flock to the green pastures and still waters. And they guard and protect the flock from bears and wolves and rally lions. They are attentive to the health and safety of the sheep. If the sheep be to look sickly, shepherd examine the diet. If they come down with a disease, shepherd bring medicine to heal. If a shepherd fall, if a sheep fall in a crack in the house, shepherd pull him out and set him back on the paths. If a lion attack, a shepherd grab his rod and staff and use it to defend his sheep, even at great cost to himself. Peter, in his first letter, gave general instruction to all members of the church. He heard leaders to do what God really wants them to do, which is to be shepherd of God's flock. People really need shepherds. At first glance, our congregation may look self-sufficient, as though they lack nothing. But each person has many agonies that they cannot overcome by themselves. Some people don't know why they are living or what their life goals should be. Though they rest with symptoms of their problem, they don't know what their, the root of their problem is. They really need a shepherd who will listen to them, understand them, guide them, and serve them with genuine love. This is true for all of us without exception. These days, the problem of mistrust is very serious. People don't trust each other. This prevents people from opening their hearts 
But if they find someone they trust, they are willing to listen and learn from them. They are so many people who need shepherds. If you are a genuine shepherd, we have so many people to take care of. Let's learn what kind of shepherd God wants us to be. First, be an example of God's flow. First Peter chapter 5, from verses 1 to 4. And many directed to the elders. Peter began by saying to the elders among you. That's verse 1. In the New Testament, the word elder, overseer, and pastors are used interchangeably. Act of Apostles chapter 20, verse 17. Titus chapter 1, verse 5 to 7. Historically, the role of elders may go back to the time of Moses. He felt that the burden of shepherding the Israelites was too heavy and almost died. So he cried out to God. Then God directed him to choose 70 elders to share with him the body of taking care of the numbers of the people. That's Numbers chapter 11, verse 10 to 17. An elder job was to take care of God's flock. In the New Testament also, it was common for a team of elders to be appointed to take care of God's flock. Acts chapter 14, verse 23. Paul told the Ephesians elders, be shepherd of the church of God, which bought with his own blood. An, elder, an elder's main job was not administrative at all, but shepherding God's flock. Although Peter was a great apostle, he identified himself with the elders and authority, appealed to them. He mentioned being a witness of Christ's suffering to encourage them that participating in God's suffering lead to sharing his glory. When you look at that, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 1b. Peter's main exhortation is be shepherd of God's flock that is under your care. Verse 2. Why is being a shepherd of God so important? It's because this is what God really wants from elders, clergy men, clergy women in his church. Is it that chapter 34? Well described it. This is what the sovereign law says. Woe to you, shepherd of Israel, who only take care of yourself. Should not shepherd take care of the flock? <laughs> you have not strengthened the weak, or healed the sick, or bound up the injured. You have not brought back the stray or sad for the lost. You have ruled them harshly and brutally. So they were scattered because there was no shepherd. Ezekiel 34, verse 1 to 5. But God also said, I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. I will search for the lost and bring by the spring. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak. That's why God sent Jesus Christ, the Holy Son, as a good shepherd for his people. God purchased his people by shedding his precious blood of Christ for them. And each one actually value to him. They are God's flock. Not us. God really wants leaders to be shepherds of his people, one by one. Jesus said, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Luke chapter 19, verse 10. The parable of the lost sheep revealed Jesus' heart to search for one lost soul until he found him. Luke chapter 15, verse 3 to 6. When one sinner repents, there is a great rejoicing in heaven. Luke 15, verse 7. This pleased God most. Shepherds have the great privilege and glory to go up with God for the salvation of souls. This is why Paul confessed that God's flaws under his gear was joy, glory, and crown. Philippians chapter 4, verse 1. Such a glorious reward has a great appeal, but there is a danger to pursue it with a wrong motive. So Peter exhort them to have a right motive and attitude as shepherd of God's flock. Let's look at 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 2 to 3. Be shepherd of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but be example. 
before. 